How am I going to make a story out of that stuff? Ellen Tinker, attacked and killed in her hall room apartment. Killer or killers unknown. I've got to have an angle, Mac. Come on, give me a break. You've seen the body. Okay, here it is. The guy that did it must have been plenty sore or a nut. He not only brutally slashed her, but he cropped off her hair as well. Holy smoke. Why? I'll tell you why when we get the guy that did it. I'll be back in a half hour. <clears throat> Is there anyone in particular who's under suspicion? She has a boyfriend? A boyfriend? The landlady said she had hundreds. Friendship was a business. Could have been any one of them. And again, maybe not. We don't have a thing to go on. Max said it might have been a nut. What do you do in a case like that? Well, I don't know. I know Mac called Doc Jason, the state psychiatrist in on the case. He's the one that can tell you about nuts. Doc Jason. Thanks, Dana. Thanks. Will you file this history, please? Yes, Doctor. And may I remind you that that reporter who phoned is still waiting outside. Oh, that Mr. Gardner. Yes, tell him I'll be with him in a little while. Now, to get back to what we were discussing, George. Your reason tells you what to do. But then you're overcome by a basic urge and some primitive drive overcomes your reason. You know, if you fall from grace again, you're going to lose your liberty for a long time, George. Society will never understand and therefore will not condone a man who impairs the morals of a minor. I'm all right. Three years in jail is a long time. I've learned my lesson. It's not the darkness of the prison that cures you, but the light of understanding. I think, doctor, you've made me see the light. I've been out now for three months, and you see I've kept out of trouble. I'll be all right now, doctor. You may send in Mr. Gardner now. And good luck, George. I'd like to see you in about a month. But if at any time you want to talk to me, don't hesitate to call. Thank you, Dr. Jason. Nice to see you, Mr. Gardner. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. I know how busy you are. It's nice of you to see me at all. Oh, no, just take a seat. Now, what can I do for you? I understand Lieutenant McCarthy called you in on the Ellen Tinker case. I wonder if I can ask you a few questions. Well, I don't know too much about it yet, but go right ahead. What do you want to know? I've covered a lot of murders in my time, but this doesn't seem like the usual kind, the kind that a normal person might commit. What do you think, Doctor? Does it look like the work of a sex maniac? That's only a label. You see, labels name, but do not explain. The human mind is a vast domain. And when its door is unhinged, it's open to an endless variety of queer happenings. I'm not quite sure I know what you mean, Doctor. Well, take epilepsy, for instance. A man has a fit and loses consciousness. Now, just imagine a moral epilepsy, where a man has a fit and loses self-possession. He becomes a slave of passion, a tool of a driving force he can neither understand nor control. But do they know what they're doing? They know the nature, but not the quality of their acts. Some know the difference between right and wrong, others do not. This may sound like a foolish question to you, Doctor, but could you give me some idea as to how many of these characters are at large? Unquestionably thousands of them. The record shows that last year there were over 20,000 offenses against women and children, and I doubt that even one-tenth of all the cases were reported. Phew, that is staggering. Will many of these offenders repeat? Unfortunately. They will.
Let me help you, may I? Thank goodness they didn't all blow away. Wasn't that clumsy of them? Gee, I hope they didn't get dirty. That could have happened to anyone. A lovely girl, hat box and photographs. Adds up to only one thing. What's that? You're a model. Oh, you mean trying to be. I'm still going to modeling school. I'm sure your training will pay off. These photographs don't do you justice. It's very important in our business to have good photographs. Thank you very much. Did I hear you say our business? Don't tell me you're a model, too. No, I'm a photographer. I have my own studio. Fashion? Yes, fashion, everything. Right now, I'm doing a series on burlesque. Gee, that sounds interesting. Gee, I hope I get a break real soon. It's so difficult to get a start. Perhaps I can help you. Drop into my studio one day next week. I have a commission from a travel agency. I'm sure you're just right for the job. Jan C. Burby, photographer, 144 Wooster Street. Gee, this is a break. Thanks a million. Oh, my name is Susan Grant, but everyone calls me Sue. Nice to know you, Sue. Nice to know you, Mr. Burbig. Wooster Street. That's Greenwich Village, isn't it? That's right. Can you tell me anything more about the assignment? Is there anything special you'd like me to wear? Yes, there is. I'll want you in a bathing suit. A white one. Oh, I have a white one, but I'm not sure if it still fits me. Oh, well, if it doesn't, I can always borrow one. That won't be necessary. I have a couple of white suits at my studio. One is just about your size. Gosh, it was wonderful meeting you like this. See you next Tuesday, then. Right, next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. feeling this is it, Mom. Mr. Verbig really knows his stuff. He's done work for some of the biggest magazines. How would you like to see your daughter as a cover girl? <laughs> that would be wonderful. But maybe you're being a little hasty. You're not certain yet that the man can use you. Don't be so pessimistic, Mom. He said I was right for the job. And he's not the type that would say it and not mean it. You should see him. He's really charming. Very continental. All right, dear. I hope you're right. It's just that I'd hate to see you disappointed. Mom, believe me, he meant it. And to prove it, I'm going to call him right now. You don't have to prove anything to me, dear. Well, I want to call him anyway. Since I'm going to buy a suit, I might as well find out if there's any particular type he prefers. Hello? Hello, Mr. Verbeek. This is Susan Grant. Remember me? I'm glad you phoned. As a matter of fact, I was intending to call you a little later. I just heard from the agency. The bathing suit is out. They're sending over a special dress. I told them to make it size 10. Is that correct? Good. Then I'll meet you at the little coffee shop I told you about. The one near your studio in the village? That's right. 146 McDougall Street. Tuesday, 11. Right. Bye-bye. I hope there won't be any more interruptions. I'm a little late as it is. Just one more and I'll be through. Mike, straighten out that cover there, will you? The corner. Tuck it under. Right. Out of the way now. Is this the way you want me? Hold your head just a bit lower. Now, don't move. I won't be a second. That's fine. Hold it. Perfect. Oh, 
Well, these come out as good as Charmaine's. Oh, much better. I have a much prettier girl this time. Why, honey, you sure talk sweet. I'll know how to show my appreciation if they're really good. My pictures are always good. I know, honey. That's why I'm here. When will I be able to see the proofs? How about Monday night? I'll bring them to the club. Find me, go on. At 12. I'm at midnight special. open. Certainly didn't take you long to find the way, baby. It never does when I really want to get somewhere. Well, here they are. Troops. Gee, really terrific. Uh-huh. I thought you would like them. These are terrific. Really terrific. Hey, take it easy, lover boy. Take it easy. You're beautiful. Really beautiful. I do look beautiful in these pictures, don't I? If my press agent don't take these, I'm going to can them for sure. Well, you'll have to excuse me, dear. I've got to get dressed. Besides, the manager don't allow visitors backstage. How about having dinner with me tonight? I'll wait out in front for you. No, I have a terrible headache. How about tomorrow night? No, I have a date. Oh, I was hoping you'd let me take you to the Vesuvio. Photography business must be doing all right. That's an expensive joint. I can make it Thursday. Oh, wonderful. yourself on my desk? All right, boss. Bill said you wanted to see me. Yeah. The route to go on that Tinker murder was pretty good. Who is this Dr. Jason you got your facts from? Are you sure he knows what he's talking about? Sure. I checked on everything he told me. Besides, he's very well known. Well, it makes good reading and the public's entitled to know the facts. Could you dig up enough material to run a daily article for two or three weeks? Could I? I've been doing research on that stuff ever since I interviewed Jason. 
I can write a book right now. Well, that does it. Get on this case first and start working backwards. I want a series on all murders of this type in the past ten years. Sit down. Now, what were you following her for? Who was following her? Why, you were, you jerk. You followed me down 10th Avenue for blocks. Now, go on. Who needs you? I was just going home. Never mind that. We'll take care of him right away, miss. Where'd you pick him up? At Manning's. He had to use the cuffs. Still a tough guy, eh? Half enough for you, Flatfoot. You don't scare me. Ah, uh, shut up or I'll throw you in the tank. There's no doubt that this gal was murdered by the same guy, is there? Practically none. Want to look at the guys we picked up so far? Yeah. Let's go. Good old Joe. Again, huh? Please, please, Lieutenant. I didn't do anything. You got no right to pick me up like this. I didn't do anything. Really? Come on. Let you and me go to the question and answer room. Sit down, you. Honest, Lieutenant, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. No? Where were you last night between the hours of one and three? Sitting up with a sick grandmother? Please, Lieutenant. You got me wrong. I did nothing bad last night. I went to a midnight show on 42nd Street. Who went? Who is? Why with no one? I, I always go alone. Yeah? Did you know Mary Barrow? Did you ever take her out? Mary Barrow? I didn't know any Mary Barrows. Why pick me up? He's a comedian, this guy is. Three convictions, each involving a chick half his age, and he's got the nerve to ask why he was picked up. Three convictions? What's he doing loose? Never heard of Mary Barrow or Ellen Tinker, huh? You dirty, stinking rat. Open up or I'll, I'll break you in half. Come on now, bub. You might as well spill it. It'll make it easier on you. I didn't do anything. Did you check the movie house yet, Dana? Yep. Nobody saw him go in, nobody saw him leave. They're playing the picture, he said. But they've been playing the same show for two weeks. The two of you work him over for a while. I've got a blow. If anything breaks, I'll be at Doc Jason's. Definitely a fetishist. And from what you tell me, I'd say that the cutting of the hair is the act that gives him his exaltation. After that, he has only one impulse, to run away, to escape. You think in his rush to get away, he'd leave some clue. But not this baby. Well, uh, here are the photographs you asked for. Maybe they'll give you some insight into the situation. Good. Let's take a look. Certainly. Now, uh, here's Henry Clark. I think the victims were too old for him. He liked younger ones. He doesn't look powerful enough to do what this baby does. Well, I think we can exclude him for the time being. Now, this is uh, Joe Summers. Now, this could be your boy. I thought so, too. We've already picked him up. We're still checking on him. 
But somehow I don't think he's the one. Well, we'll keep him open. Now, uh, here's one I know. George Mastro. Now, George likes the girls, but I doubt that he'd be the type of man who'd be involved in the kind of crime we're thinking of. As a matter of fact, he was in my office only a few days ago, and he's making a very good adjustment. I see. Oh, now here's John Tedeschi. John has a very bad record. He began at 18 when he viciously attacked a cousin of his, and it was only for the fact that the family didn't want to have any publicity that he got out of that. But since that time, he's been involved in two or three crimes that were brutal. He's been in twice. If it were up to me, he'd never be out. I think that he has both the background and the personality of the kind of a man you're looking for. but lipstick and not too much of that. You're the first photographer I've ever heard of who doesn't want his model to use makeup. That's not exactly true. You're one of the very few who gets by without it. Most of the other girls I photograph have to use plenty. Thank you. This dress is lovely. I've never worn a creation like this before. Yes, it does bring you out very nicely. <laughs> Thank you. This is a fascinating business. Yes, in many ways it is. Some of these girls are really beautiful. Some of them are. I helped a little, of course. Oh, I'm sure you did. You do such wonderful work. You make them all look so glamorous. Do I? Well, maybe. But glamour doesn't mean anything. You have something much more important than that. Something within. If I can capture it on film, I'll make you one of New York's top models. Oh, that would be wonderful. Do you really think you can? If I don't, I'll be very disappointed. Have any of these girls become famous? The one on your right did, but in the wrong sort of way, poor kid. No, not that, not that one. The one next to her. That's her. Her picture was in all the morning papers. Really? What's her name? Mary Baddow. The girl they found murdered in Central Park this morning. Oh, I read about that. Is that her? But this picture's much prettier than the one that was in the papers. Why, well, you'd never know it was the same girl. When did you take it? Oh, about six months ago, I guess. That's the last I ever saw of her. Well, let's go to work, shall we? Find out anything worthwhile at the Farrell girl's house? Oh, a little. Her mother's one of those straight-laced gospels from Robin Baines, who obviously was so strict. The kid had to go out on a slide. Fellow with the wrong type of crowd. Get any of their names? Ah, uh, no. The mother wouldn't allow the kid to bring anybody up to the house. She didn't even know she was in show business. Didn't know a thing. Until I found this theatrical photo hidden in the closet. Uh-huh. I see the name and address of the photographer is on the back. <coughs> Jan C. Verbe. Maybe we can get a lead from him. Could be.
And keep your hat really down. But turn it to the camera. There we go. Fine. Now, slightly towards the camera, Joyce. That's terrific. Relax. Thanks for listening to take, huh? I'll be with you in a moment. Sit down, please. Thank you. Now, don't forget that, huh, Joyce? Just slightly towards the camera. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it then. Hold it. Perfect. Relax. Very, very fine, uh, Joyce. Now then. I'm Helen DeVoe from the Excelsior Agency. They said you might be able to use me. Stand up, will you please? Turn around. A bit more, dear. Turn around. No, I can't use you. You're not exactly what I have in mind. Some other time. It's the first time I've ever seen Helen DeVoe turned down. I don't have an inferiority complex. But I don't know why he chose me instead of her. Yes? What about homicide? I'm Lieutenant McCarthy. You, Janet Burby. Yes, what can I do for you? It's about the Mary Barrel case. Yes, I read about it. I took some pictures of her some time back. Yes, we know. That's how we got your name. Can you tell us something about her? No, not much. She seemed to be a sweet kid. State struck. You know the type. When did you see her last? Oh, uh, about six months ago, I guess. I took several shots of her at the time. Over there, there is one. Nice work. I see you specialize in ballet and art studies. No, not particularly. I do all types of photography. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah? Here's another picture of the dead girl. What else can you tell me about her? Not much. I really don't know anything about her. Do you know any of her friends? No, no one. I know she worked at the Star Burlesque Theater, but that's closed now. Know anyone that worked at the same time she did? Uh, yes. Scarlet Rose and Lily DeMar. Oh, but I don't know if they knew her. Know where I could reach them? I don't know about Scarlet, but, uh, Lily DeMar's working in Ernie's uh, here right in the village. Hey, Dana. Yeah, Mike? Get the name and address of this DeMar dame and tell her come down to the office tomorrow. Okay. There's nothing more I can tell you. I don't bother with the girls who work where I do. Most of them are jealous of me because I'm a star. Did she have any boyfriends? Search me. I never saw any, but I wouldn't know. She seemed like a scared little rabbit to me. She had no business in this racket. Uh, no one at all who ever hung around? No. Hey, wait a minute. There was a guy. An older man that used to hang around that joint. He wasn't the ordinary stage door Johnny type, but he used to ogle all the girls. What was his name? Gee, I don't know. Everyone called him Pop. What did he look like? Rather tall. Maybe six feet. He had a round, full face. If he had a beard, you might say he looked like Santa Claus. If he's the guy that we're looking for, he's no Santa Claus. How was he dressed? Just ordinary. You say he was an older guy. About how old? Mm, maybe 55 or so. Are you sure there's nothing else you can think of? Gee, no. I'd be glad to help you out if I could, but that's all I know. Well, thanks for coming in. Don't mention it. And if you're ever down in the village, don't forget to drop in and catch my act sometime. Maybe I will. Do that. I'm at Ernie's, you know. I think 
think I fell for you the first time I saw you at the club. But your dance tonight was the most exciting thing I've ever seen. I've never felt this way with anyone before. If you think that's good, wait till you take me home. I'll do a dance for you that will knock you right off your seat. Wonderful. I get such a kick out of being with you like this at last. This is a big night for me. It would be for me too, honey. Except I got bad news today. What's that? My sister again. She's married to some jerk that can't hold a job for more than two days in a row. She's expecting a baby soon. And they're broke again as usual. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, then I'm on a spot. She expects me to send her the dough. I'm broke myself right now. You don't have a hundred I could have for a week. No, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, can't you get an advance from the club? Oh, forget it. Let's get out of here. Got to get home. All right, dear. Waiter, give me the check, please. <laughs> Good night, big boy. Thanks for the company. Good night. I thought I was coming up for a while. You said you danced for me. Some other time. I'm a little tired now. Good night. Say, that's enough. Take it easy. You've got to let me come up for a while, Eddie. You've got to. I'm crazy about you. Lots of guys are crazy about me. But this is different. I love you. I mean it. Shall we put our cards on the table, honey? You're an all right guy, Jan, and fun to have around. But let's face it, you can't afford me. I'm a luxury, and you're just a hard-working photographer. I do all right. That's just the point, baby. All right isn't good enough for me. I won't bother you again. Shirt on. I'm coming. Mr. Moore? Yes. Oh, for me? Thanks. Thank you. Tell me if you delivered some flowers I ordered this morning. Miss Lily DeMar on Riverside Drive. You have? About a half an hour ago. I see. You sure she got him? I see. Thank you.
all those soup. No, not this morning, I'm busy. No, make it some other time. No, Sue. This afternoon, that's all right. Later on in the afternoon. Goodbye. What's the matter, dear? I don't know. I was just talking to Mr. Verbig and he acted so strange, so abrupt. Maybe he was just very busy. He's usually so considerate. It's not at all like him. I wonder if I've done anything to annoy him. He seemed angry. There's no use getting upset about it. It can't be that important. Or is it? What do you mean? You're not falling for him, are you? Don't be ridiculous. Why do you say that? Oh, I don't know. You keep talking about him all the time. Oh, Mother, that's too... too silly for words. It really is. He's so much older than you. Get many in a roundup this time? Yeah, there's not many left, but we got a few. All with iron-bound alibis like John Tedetsky, I'm sure. What's your name? Mike. Mike what? Ecclebert. What's he picked up for? Knowing a lady in the theater. 72nd Street and where, miss? Near Central Park West. Are you in charge here? Yeah. I'd like to know the meaning of this outrage. Why am I here? Where have I seen you before, Buster? I wouldn't know. You aren't answering my question. I've seen you somewhere before, all right. What was he picked up for? Ah, oh, some gal complained he tailed up for blocks. Ha, I never heard anything so ridiculous. She must be a psycho. Now I know, Buster. Ever hear of Doc Jason? It's you again. You don't seem to catch on very fast, do you, Jen? No. Absolutely. Who cares? Now look, brother, this has got to stop. No, absolutely no. Never. Never. N-E-V-E-R. Never. Get it? Thank you. 
lousy peeping Tom. What are you doing here? Lily, honey, don't be mad. I have to see you. Why don't you want to see me anymore? What am I going to do with you? What good are you going to do me? Lily, don't speak that way. Even if it is true, don't say it. I've got a lot more to say to you, you creep you. If you don't get out of here right away, I'm going to call the cops. For the very idea of busting into a lady's apartment. Listen, please. I love you. Get away from me. You make my skin crawl, you jerk. Don't say that. You make me angry. What? Are you, out of your mind make you angry? What about me? Well, here's our only eyewitness. Oh, break it last. 
Sit down, please. I understand you grappled with the killer a second. What did he look like? I don't know exactly. It was kind of dark out. Well, you must have some idea. Was he tall or short? Tall, maybe six feet. Was he wearing a hat? No, no hat. Well, was his hair dark or light? You must have noticed that. Well, his hair was black. Did you notice anything about his features? Did he have a scar or anything? I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell. Do you think you might be able to recognize him if I showed you some pictures? No, it all happened so fast. I didn't get a good look. What kind of clothes was he wearing? Dark suit. Did his suit get torn or anything when you grabbed him? No, but filthy. Mm -hmm. Plenty of dust on that fire escape. Mm -hmm. His hands. Did he have anything in his hands? Was he carrying anything? No, not a thing. I could see that. Thank you very much. Bye. Yes, sir. What's this about his hands? The hair he cut off. He didn't leave it behind. That means he took it with him, right? Right. And if he took it with him and he wasn't carrying it, he must have shoved it into his pocket. Ever try to get hair off your suit after a haircut? Oh, I get it. Some of her hair is probably still stuck in his pocket. Nice figuring, Mac. Now, if that suit is as dirty as I think it is, he's going to send it out to be cleaned. I want every cleaning store in Manhattan checked. Put on as many men as you can. And here's what to look for. A man's suit. got some publicity this time, Lieutenant. Thanks for nothing. It's news, Mac. You can't keep a thing like this quiet. Officer, get me Ernie's on West 3rd Street. I want to talk to the manager. You know, this Demar Dame was here less than a week ago. She asked me to come down and catch her act. talking. Yeah, sure, I'll be down. Gee, I never thought I'd get here in time. I didn't realize how late it was. And then when I looked at my watch and saw it was two o'clock, I rushed, so I forgot my bag and I had to go back. Jan? You were expecting me, weren't you? Yes. You know that play you told me about last week? Well, I saw it last night, and it's wonderful. Shall I change into the cocktail dress? Sit down. I'm handling the Lily Demar murder. What can you tell me about her? What do you want to know? Everything. Did she have many boyfriends? Are you kidding? If I had a buck for every John Lily dated, just one buck, I'd have enough dough to pay for my house for thousand dollar bills. As many as that, huh? I'll say. If you divided this town into two groups, those who knew Lily and those who didn't, be like separating those who were old enough to vote from those still in rompers. How about yourself? 
You look like you're old enough to be out of diapers. As far as I was concerned, Lily was only merchandise. Top grade stuff, mind you, but still only merchandise. She had as much sex appeal for me as a porterhouse steak would have for a butcher. Never mind the wisecracks. Did you ever see her after business hours? Look, you can believe what you want, but I happen to have a beautiful wife and three swell kids at home. And I happen to be a very happy, well-adjusted guy. If I wanted to play around with glamour pussies like Lily, I wouldn't have to chase after them. Not in my racket. They're only bread and butter to me. You must know some of the guys she went with. Does she have a steady? No, Lily liked variety. Besides, a steady would cramp a style. Did any of the guys that she went out with get sore at her? Most of them, I guess. Lily would play around with them for a while, get what she wanted, and give the suck of the gate. Did any of them get sore at her recently? Uh, yeah, there was a photographer who was hanging around. Can you think of his name? Gee, I knew it. Uh, yeah, Verbig. Would that be Jan C. Verbig? I guess so. Hey, Dana. Get me the file on the super's uh, testimony. If I'm not mistaken, his description of the killer could fit Verbig very easily. Hey, well, if you're right, looks like we finally got a break. And that'll be all then. Thanks a lot. Okay. McCarthy speaking. Yes, Collins? This is it, Mac. It's a navy blue suit for a guy about 6'1". Long black hairs in the pocket of the jacket. The suit's very dirty. Great. Rust and paint, too, huh? That's it, all right. Did you get the name of the owner? Well, what do you know? Get that suit out here pronto. Hey, Dana, forget that file and get a car ready right away. Mothers are funny. What do you mean? Mine says I have a crush on you. And what did you say? That it was ridiculous. Why did you say that? I just wanted to stop her from asking questions. Do you think it is ridiculous for someone to love me? No, no, of course not. I think you're very charming. Very. Why do you fight me? I want to love you. You have such lovely hair. You're afraid of me, like all the others. You reject me too. them you toss them aside. No, no, please! Hey, get in there. Open up, please. <laughs> Go get it, Dana. <laughs> Hello? 
Yes, the district attorney is here. It's for you, Mr. Henderson. Thank you. Yes, Fisher? Do you know how, how much longer the doctor will be? It's hard to say. He's giving Verbeck the injection of sodium pentatol now. Oh, I don't know. An hour, maybe two hours. Okay, I'll be there as soon as I can. Uh, does that, uh, does that put him in a hypnotic state? It's more like a tooth serum. Why did you cut the hair? I, I don't know. You don't know. You knew you could buy hair, human hair, all you wanted. It wouldn't be the same. Tourniquet, please. Now just put it down, Connie. Put your head to the side. That's the way. I'm not going to hurt you at all. And tell me, does this hurt? Nothing. No. Now, just a second. Now, just look away. Now, I didn't hurt you, did I, Verby? No, Doctor. Take, hey, please, nurse. Now, I'm going to ask you to count to ten when I tell you. Will you please do that? Yes, Doctor. All right, begin now. One, two, three, four. Do you hear me? Yes. Now you're relaxed. You're almost asleep. But you'll be able to speak to me. And you'll tell me the truth. And I want you to go back into your memory. Far back. And tell me, what first comes to your mind that was a significant recollection? I remember Helen. I love Helen. We were going to be married. I never went to the church. Why not? I was afraid. Afraid? Afraid of what? Afraid of having children. But children of your own? Was your own childhood so full of painful memories that you wanted no child of your own to relive it? Yes. What comes to your mind? My father, I once saw my father cry. My father was wonderful. He took me everywhere. My mother had no time. She was an actress. After the circus, I asked my father to take me to see my mother. I never should have done it. I never should have done it. Why not? Come, you can tell me. We've been talking frankly. I'll understand. The theater was empty. My father took me to the dressing room. He opened the door. A man was stroking my mother's long, beautiful hair and kissing her. He left me alone with him. He ran out. That night, he shot himself. All right, Jan. Control yourself. Your nurse should take the syringe. Come on, my boy. You'll be as well as ever. You're going to sleep a little while now. And rest. Well, I've got to go now, doctor. The DA is waiting for me. Well, Doctor, it's one of the most cogent cases of subconscious compulsion that I've ever seen. All the way from his passion for revenge on woman, right down to the hair fetish. Look, all I want to know is, did he know what he was doing? I'm afraid he did, but... No buts about it. He knew. You'll have to pay the penalty. What are you looking so disturbed about, Doctor? I was thinking of what the state will spend on the trial and the execution. Society won't benefit from that man's death. 
And they could use that money to build more hospitals and train psychiatrists so that they could study these cases. And I think these tragedies might be prevented. A man commits a horrible crime and you feel sorry for him. In a way, yes, it may sound a bit corny, but as the twig is bent, the tree inclines. If I had had the opportunity to treat the twig, you probably wouldn't have had to chop down the tree. Nevertheless, he gets the ax. <laughs> Help you? Oh, thank you. 